John Lennon, a celebrated musician and founding member of the Beatles, was not only famous for his musical genius, but also for his activism and influential songwriting. His relationship with Yoko Ono, an avant-garde artist and musician, began in the late 1960s and became one of the most iconic and talked-about partnerships of the era. Together, they were heavily involved in peace activism and art, notably staging bed-ins for peace to protest the Vietnam War. Their relationship was also significant in influencing the direction of Lennon's post-Beatles work, with Ono often collaborating or contributing to his projects. Their union, while sometimes controversial, left a lasting impact on popular culture and the world of contemporary art and music. John Lennon and Yoko Ono are iconic figures in the world of music and art, and their time at the Dakota Apartments in New York City is a significant part of their story. The Dakota, a historic luxury apartment building located on the northwest corner of 72nd Street and Central Park West, is known for its Gothic architecture and has housed many famous residents. We had limited photographic documentation of the interior of Lennon's apartment. However, what we did capture offered intriguing glimpses into his living space. Lennon and Ono's life in the Dakota began in 1973 when they were looking to move from their loft on Bank Street. Bob Gruen, who photographed Lennon when he lived in New York City, said the couple wanted a home with better security. He said they looked at homes in Greenwich, Connecticut and on Long Island before buying the apartment at the Dakota from the actor Robert Ryan, making it past the building's notoriously picky board. The apartment became their home and a creative hub where they continued their artistic and musical collaborations. Roberta Flack, Graydon Carter, Rosemary Clooney, Leonard Bernstein, and Judy Garland have been on the long list of notable residents of Dakota Building. The Dakota was designed to provide the privacy and exclusivity of a private mansion. The apartments were built around a central courtyard, and the building was equipped with amenities that were highly innovative for the time, such as an in-house power plant, central heating, and elevators. The apartments inside the Dakota are known for their spacious and lavish layouts, with high ceilings, grand entrances, and intricate details. The Dakota, with its fortress-like walls, offered Lennon a much-needed refuge from the public eye, allowing him to focus on his family and artistic endeavors. Lennon and Ono actually had more than just the 72 unit. The Lennons generated the most criticism from neighbors over their real estate purchases. He and Ono had multiple apartments in the building. Two were used for storage, one as a studio and two as guest apartments. One on the first floor, two on the seventh, one on the eighth and one on the ninth. A storage unit once owned by the Lennons sold in 2008 for $801,000. The seventh floor apartment where the couple lived had four bedrooms and offered stunning views of Central Park's treetops. Some features inside were heavy brass light switches, sit-down elevators, as well as mahogany, oak, and cherrywood paneling. The pre-war property features dazzling rooms of furnished wood and tasteful design and comes with four bedrooms, four full bathrooms, and seven fireplaces and is finished with granite countertops and hardwood floors. The apartment has a whopping 4,425 square feet of space and boasts many different amenities that are included with the building, including an airy central courtyard and an in-building gym. During his time at the Dakota, John Lennon experienced a significant transformation in both his personal and professional life. The shift from the height of Beatlemania to a more subdued, introspective lifestyle in New York City was profound. The apartment itself became a sanctuary for Lennon and Yoko Ono. It was filled with art, 
books, and musical instruments, reflecting Lennon's diverse interests and creative impulses. The space was not just a home, but a hive of creativity. Here, Lennon wrote and recorded music, delved into visual arts, and collaborated with Ono on various artistic projects. This period was also marked by a deep commitment to his family. The birth of his son, Sean, in 1975, led Lennon to take a hiatus from the music industry to focus on his role as a father. He often spoke of the joy he found in his everyday life with Sean and Yoko, whether it was making breakfast, playing in the park, or just enjoying the quiet moments at home. His walks in Central Park, just steps away from the Dakota, became a routine part of his life. Lennon, often accompanied by Sean, could be seen strolling through the park, enjoying the simplicity of nature in the midst of a bustling city. These walks were not just leisurely pastimes, they were sources of inspiration, moments of reflection, and opportunities to connect with the everyday world outside his celebrity. The local shops around the Dakota also became part of Lennon's routine. He was known to frequent neighborhood stores, interacting with shopkeepers and residents, embracing a sense of community that he had often missed during the height of his fame with the Beatles. This semblance of a normal life was something he greatly valued. Lennon's life at the Dakota was a blend of personal growth, artistic productivity, and a quest for normalcy. It was a time that showed a different side of the man who had once been a global superstar, revealing a more grounded, introspective individual devoted to his art, his family, and his personal well-being. The Dakota, therefore, stands not just as the site of his tragic death, but more importantly, as a testament to a rich, albeit brief, period of artistic resurgence and personal fulfillment in his life. As of today, the Dakota offers a total of 93 units, most of which are occupied. Lennon and Ono's time at the Dakota was marked by both creativity and controversy. They were deeply involved in political activism and used their platform to promote peace and social justice. This period also saw the release of some of Lennon's solo albums, including Walls and Bridges, in 1974 and Double Fantasy in 1980, the latter of which was a collaboration with Ono. Tragically, the Dakota is also where John Lennon's life came to a premature end on December 8, 1980. He was assassinated by Mark David Chapman outside the building's entrance upon returning home from a recording session. This event shocked the world and marked the end of an era in music history. The entrance to the Dakota has since become a site of remembrance for fans of Lennon, with many visiting to pay their respects. Yoko Ono continued to live in the Dakota after Lennon's death and has maintained an active role in preserving his legacy, as well as pursuing her own artistic endeavors. The Dakota with its storied past and association with Lennon and Ono, remains a symbol of their lasting impact on music, culture, and the ongoing pursuit of peace. The building and its immediate surroundings, particularly the section of Central Park known as Strawberry Fields, named after the Beatles' song, Strawberry Fields Forever, have become a pilgrimage site for fans who wish to honor Lennon's memory and celebrate his life and music. During the pandemic, Ono opted to move to her expansive 600-acre farm near Franklin, New York in the Catskills full-time, with no plans of returning to her Upper West Side abode. The 90-year-old is choosing to spend the rest of her life on a rural upstate New York farm that she and her late husband, John Lennon, purchased together in 1978. The Dakota thus remains an indelible part of John Lennon's story, symbolizing both the creative resurgence of his later years and the tragic end of his life. 
its storied walls provided a backdrop to a significant chapter in the life of one of the 20th century's most influential musicians. After taking a look at John Lennon and Yoko Ono's apartment, what are your thoughts? Is their home as spectacular as you thought it would be? Would you like to visit this apartment? If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and catch you in the upcoming video.